Welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is the King. Well, we give God praise, thanksgiving, and adoration for the privilege and the glorious opportunity that we have to share with you, the viewer and listener, a living word from God. And boy, oh boy, do I have a word for you today. Please grab a Bible. Make sure you have a pen or a highlighter and something to take notes with. We're going to finish up our broadcast that we aired last week. God gave us a wonderful word. It's called, It's Time to Do Something. Say that with me. It's time to do something. I mean, we've done enough talk. That's enough. It's time to put up or shut up. Glory to God. It has to be more than just a, My hallelujah belongs to you. That's fine. But Jesus said, if you love me, you do what I said. <laughs> Glory to God. Somebody say it here. It's time to do something. Somebody's calling in. Don't forget that you can go down on our uh, bottom of the screen and uh, there's a text number there. You can actually text that number. There's also an email there. Get to the bottom of the screen, Kingdom Seekers Radio at Gmail. Send me an email. Give me a testimony. Let me know what God did for you, how you got healed, delivered, encouraged. Just send a testimony. If you need a copy of my book, you'll see that at the bottom of the screen too. I'll send it to you. If you don't have the money to go on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, I will gladly send you one. But you have to send an email, Kingdom Seekers Radio at gmail.com. Anyway, go to Matthew chapter 9. Let me give you the second half of this message. Matthew 9. Let's begin at verse 35. I'll read our text and then we'll pray. And Jesus went about all the cities. How many of them? All of them. And villages. Teaching in their synagogues or the churches. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing. Teaching and preaching and healing. Every sickness, every dis. Ease, because when we think disease, we automatically think physical, right? Cancer, tumors, and COVID-19, dis-ease. But disease could be mental illness. There could be mental uncertainty. People with bipolar, attention deficit disorder, sexual addictions, nicotine addiction, gambling addictions. See, a lot of diseases among the people. Verse 36, but when he saw the multitude, circle that or highlight it, please. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, underline that, glory to God, it's time to do something. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are fruit. Underline that, that's that third group we talked about last week. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers, underline that, wow, into his harvest. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the broadcast today. We thank you for the anointing of God, for it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, O Lord of hosts. We're, we're able to speak under the anointing and inspiration of your spirit. I pray that my tongue would be like the pen of a ready writer and my voice like a flame of fire. Glory to God. I pray that I would hear accurately from heaven. Grant me utterance to speak accurately. Grant the people open hearts and ears to hear accurately. And lastly, grant us grace to be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Jesus' name. You agree with that? Say amen. So last week, we talked on the subject of it's time to do something. I also asked you to write down, how do I apply this to my life? How does this apply to me? Not my wife, not my husband, not my children, not pastor so-and-so, me. Okay, where am I in this? We pointed out three groups. In verse 36, we see multitudes. Somebody say multitudes. In verse 37, we see disciples. Somebody say disciples. And in verses 37 and 38, we see the word laborer or laborers. So three specific groups, but notice this, one Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. That's a message for one of you evangelists. Different groups, one Jesus. Oh, God. you could be Republican, there's still one Jesus. Democrat, one Jesus, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Glory to God. That's a message for somebody. Anyway, we asked the question, which group are you in? 
In the multitudes, we saw that they fainted. In the Greek, that simply means they were disquieted. They were discontented. They were weary. There was mental uncertainty for a variety of reasons. Some people had financial issues. Other people, it is disease physically. Other people, it's mental disease or uncertainty. Other people had addiction. Y'all know Jesus. Jesus dealt with harlots, prostitutes, adulterers. Jesus dealt with all kinds of folk, publicans, uh, sinners. Jesus didn't care. He wanted to help folk. And so people have a myriad of issues. And I shared last week. And if you don't know, you get a copy of my book at the bottom of the screen, The Success Flow. Man, I was a hot mess when I came to Jesus. It wasn't just that I was not born again. I was a mess, y'all. <laughs> I was a mess. Crack house, horror house, jail house, crack, oh man, any house you can think of except the White House. I've been in it. And Jesus, in his mercy, got me born again. And then I went into that second group, the disciples. I was a student. And I said last week that that's twofold. One, you have to continue in the word, Jesus said, to be a disciple indeed, not a believer. There's a lot of people that are believing born again, but they haven't made the shift to discipleship. They ain't studying no word. Don't want to know. Other than Sunday, that's it. Bible closed, bless the dust off and go at it again Sunday. You know, not doing a lot. No discipleship. Believers on their way to heaven. They got a rough ride on their way there, but they're going. But the disciple wants to go a step further. They're studying the word so they can be made free indeed. I'm talking about unquestionably free, free from the nicotine and free from the alcohol and free from the perversion and free from the sex habits and free from fear of flying, fear of the dark, all kind of stuff. People need to be made free. And Jesus said, the only way that's going to happen, believer, is to continue in my word. You'll know the truth. That truth will make you free. And if the son shall therefore make you free, baby, you free indeed. That's what Jesus said. That's middle Southeast translation on it. But that's exactly what he said in John chapter eight, verses 31 through 36. And the second part about that discipleship, they're also in training because while you're training and working on yourself, you still got to go do what the master told you to do, right? You still got to get out there and help people. You still got to do whatever he called you to do. You're getting your, your musical voice ready. You're getting your business licenses and stuff in order. You're, just, you're training while you're working on yourself. So discipleship is twofold. Then there was that third group, boy. Oh, boy. We spent some time on them last week. Those laborers. We found out in the Greek it actually means pray that the father thrust them out. Forced him out. You should go look that up. Read an Amplified Bible. Whew. And then I asked a question, and it wasn't rhetorical. I want you to answer this one. Why do I have to pray <laughs> to the Father <laughs> to tell his employees, get to work? You, you really got to kick them out there, Lord? Your laborers, people you saved, you shed your blood for them. They prayed to you and actually you helped them. You got them their wife, their husbands, their cars, their home, all the stuff they asked you for. You did all that for them. And now you got to force them out to do their job. In the natural, nobody has to force me to go to work. I'm a, I'm a grown man. I believe in responsibility. I believe in accountability. <laughs> you, know, you, ain't, you ain't got to tell me but one time. Show me the job and pretty much respectfully, you know, get out of my way. I'm going to take care of this job and do the best I can in the name of the Lord. So why am I praying to the Father to thrust out, force out his laborers to get out there and work? And I took you to Revelation. You remember what Jesus said? He said, I walk up and down the midst of the candlesticks, all the churches. He said, that's what I'm doing. And I know their works. I know they're doing this. They're laboring and having patience and da, 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 da. They found out that these were false apostles. He said, I see all that. Then he went on to say, nevertheless, Revelation chapter 2, I have something against you. Somebody say, it's time to do something. It's time to do something. Anytime the Lord says, I have something against you, baby, it's time to do something. Anytime the Lord says, I see that, I see you doing that, that's great. I see the tide. Appreciate you talking in tongues. I love your dance. Love it when you play the tambourine and dance before me. But I got something against you. And he said, you left your first love. Good God Almighty. The most important thing. He didn't say you left me. For a long time, I read that verse and I thought Jesus meant they left him. But that can't be right because in the previous verses, he said, you're laboring for my namesake. So they didn't leave Jesus. They left their first love, which was what? Witnessing. Mm. 
I just gave somebody a revelation. God had to show it to me. It's the witness. When you first get saved, you're on fire for God. You want to tell everybody about Jesus. You'll talk to the wall. You talk to people on the bus. You don't care where you are. You're just so happy. And you tell everybody about Jesus. But something happened along the way where we got smug, where we got complacent, where we just got comfortable, where we just got our hallelujah and our praise. And I'm just going to church because I want to hear Bishop. And oh, so and so's coming to town. I just want to hear him. And that's it. We forgot the first love. And Jesus said, remember from whence you are fallen. See? And repent and do the first. That's what Jesus said. So we're in one of those categories. I brought that up last week. And I said, find yourself. Which one am I in? Am I in one of the multitudes who I'm disquieted, I'm discontent, deep in debt, don't know how to get out, mental uncertainty now. Oh God, fear of COVID, fear of this, fear of that. Or don't have a job and I'm not sure and I'm fearful. And, or am I one of those people that are bitter and talking mean against people on TV and mad at the president, and mad at him and mad at her and so disquieted? What's wrong? What group am I in? Or are you in that second group where you're a disciple, man, you, you made a transition. Uh-uh, this Bible, not just Sunday. Uh-uh, I'm reading my Bible. I'm studying my Bible so I can get free. I want to be free from the fear of flying, fear from free of the dark, free from nicotine, free from the drug. I want to be free from the homosexual lifestyle, free from the lesbian lifestyle, free. I want one wife, or if you're uh, a woman, one husband. You, you know, because we come in with so many issues, y'all, and people don't talk about them because we dance around them. That's another message for one of you evangelists. We want to dance around the problem and shout and everybody think everything all right. But if you know this word, you know good and well it ain't all right. You know, disciples are working on themselves, but at the same time, they're out there trying to help other people. We work in ourselves. We never said we were perfect. We, were, we never said we're holier than thou. We know as disciples, we're in training. We're working on something. We're getting better and better. Our lives are getting clean up every day. We're getting more dust off of every day. We're polishing up our act every day. Repenting before God. Cleanse me, Jesus. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me, Lord. I shouldn't have did it. I'll do better next time. Oh, God. We're disciples of Christ working on something, working on ourselves and helping somebody else. Or are we in that third group where we're so comfortable where Jesus got to walk up in your faith? Revelation chapter two, read it for yourself. Had to come up in your church, send a message by his angels and to John. You tell that to that church, I see all that. And you let them know I got something against them. See, they forsook their first love. Tell them, I said, they better remember from when they fell from and tell them they need to repent. And tell them if they don't, I'm coming down and I'm removing their candlestick. That's what Jesus said. And he went all through Revelation chapter two and three with that. He, ad he addressed seven different churches and he was tight on them, y'all. He kept saying, I know, I know, I know, repent, I know, repent. Oh God, Jesus, and he's shaking up his church. Why? Because... Judgment must begin at the house of God. That's in 1 Peter chapter 4, I believe it's verse 17. Let me fact check myself so you can see if you're taking notes. It's 1 Peter, oh God, chapter 4. Good God Almighty. Verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin. He didn't say optional. No, it starts with my house first. That's what the Bible says. <laughs> Jesus, I'm cleaning up my church first. That's why you see all that stuff being exposed in the media now with the church. Not just politicians, the church. Y'all hear about it, and I'm not knocking nobody that mention no names. Y'all know me, I don't badmouth people. But you see it going on. What? Judgment's beginning at the house. See, Jesus saying, repent. Get it together. Remember for once you have fallen. Just because you got so high and mighty, you think it's all about you now. You forgot about soul winning. You forgot all about that fire you had when you first knew me. And see, now I gave you a name and gave you a church. And it's all about the dance and the shout. And then that's how they got caught up in those sexual things and stuff. Because they forgot, y'all. Don't do it. Don't remember from when you were fallen. Repent and do the first works. Amen. So what should the first group do? Those multitudes. Number one. Or you can say, A. Make the Lord your shepherd. Because the text says in Matthew, they were like sheep without a shepherd. So you need a twofold. A, make the Lord your shepherd. You got to get saved, boo. 
You got to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. He's the good shepherd. John chapter 10. And he loves you. And right now you're a lost sheep. So you need a shepherd. His name is Jesus. Give your life to God. Or you might be saved, but you're still going through all that stuff that the unsaved are going through. That means you need an under shepherd. Write that down. What's the under shepherd? A pastor. I can assure you, and I'm saying all this in love. I'm anointed to do this. I'm teaching what God give me, y'all. I ain't got nothing to do with beating nobody up. That's why I don't mention names. I'm just putting the word out. The problems that you're having, a lot of times because you don't have a pastor. Or you're not submitted to him or her. Submit means that you're under the mission. Submission. They got a mission and vision from God, and you get under it. I'm going to do what I have to do to support you. You're not under the mission. Submission. That's exactly what it means. And so you're probably not even tithing and supporting that church. You're just there on Sunday or online doing your little thing and doing nothing to support it. And, and that's not connection. If you're not tithing, there's not a connection there. You think there's one. I didn't say you weren't saved. You are open to that devourer. And so he's open, not just financially. He's out there wrecking havoc. See? So you need an under shepherd and submit to, the, to that. That means get under the mission. Doesn't mean that you got to do everything somebody say like they're your boss. No. What's the mission? What God call you to do, Pastor? All right, I'm a member of this church. I'm going to get under that. Sub means under. Get under the mission. And I'm going to support you. You got that? All right. Number three for the first group, or C, feed on the word. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still water. Why? He needs to feed you. <laughs> okay. A, a sheep needs some food. See, we feed on the word. So if you're one of those uh, in the first group, multitudes, make the Lord your shepherd. If you're already saved, but you're still in part of that multitude like that, that means you don't have an under shepherd. More than likely you don't, or you're not properly connected to it. You have by name you are, you're on their role, but you're not really part of it. And see, feed on that word. Okay, be a disciple indeed. Got it? Second group, hands-on training is what you need. Do I have time to go through that? Real quickly, go to, uh, well, say where you are. Look at chapter 10. We said uh, chapter 9, verse 30. Look at chapter 10, verse 1. And I'm getting ready to get the time in a moment. Good, I'm going to do it quickly. When he called to him his 12, what? Disciples, that second group. He gave them what, y'all? Power, authority against all unclean spirits. Cast them out. <laughs> Heal all matter of sickness and all matter of disease. In other words, Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would thrust them out. Then he had corresponding action. He took his disciples and thrust them out. Can you see that? Corresponding action. All right. So what do we need? In other words, Jesus said, hands on training, boys. Let me get y'all working. Okay. Flip over to Luke 10. Because of time, I'm going to expedite. But you get the gist of it. Just write the text down. Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord, verse 1, appointed other 70 also and sent them out two by two. And he told them the same thing. Go preach, go teach, freely receive, freely give. So notice that Jesus first sent 12, trained up some more, got them to a point where at least they go do some work. They're not perfect yet. None of us get that way right away. But he still thrust you out. Get out there and do something. And then when they come back, he would say, rest a while. Y'all come on and rest, okay? And then he thrust them out again. When he rose from the dead, what did he say? Go in all the world. Go preach. Come on now. It ain't over. Can y'all see that? And, and that's that first love. You can never forget that. That's the primary commandment. Jesus gave us that when he rose from the dead. So second group, hands on training, okay? Get out there and do something. Go do something. I didn't say you were perfect yet. You can't wait. <sighs> Forgive me. I raised my voice. <laughs> I'm probably talking to myself. I had the Lord had to teach me this. I didn't wait. I went out and just started it, man. I didn't have to have 500 members before I started. Nope. Went out there and got that contract, paid the rent on it, and we there worshiping, y'all. Yes, sir. Just get out there and get going. Start writing that book. Start writing that song. Do something. If God called you to do something, start doing something. Hands on training. You can't wait for the perfect day. There's no such thing as a perfect day. People are going to hell every day, second by second, while you're waiting for the perfect time. There is no perfect time. If God calls you, start doing something, but stay under the training. Because he would send them out, then they'd come back. Got it? Third group. Repent. That's what Jesus said. Go to Revelation chapter 2 again. 
<clears throat> Revelation chapter 2. Let's just stick with the words of Jesus. He should know what he's doing, right? Start at verse 1 again. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things save he that holds the seven stars in his right hand. That's his power. Who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I mentioned last week, if you back up to chapter 1 verse 30, he tells you that those candlesticks were churches. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he's still walking up and down in the midst of those churches, y'all. Ain't nothing changed, right? Verse 2, I know your works. See, Jesus knows. And your labor. And your patience. And how you cannot bear them which are evil. Have tried them which say they're apostles. You found out they're lying. Man, you don't even notice that? A lot of people say, I'm an apostle, so and so. I'm prophet, so and so. And they he lying. <laughs> For one, an apostle ain't going around bragging he an apostle. No, it's no prophet. They don't go around bragging about that stuff. This is me and you. Really? Those of us in leadership, you should see, number one, fruit of the spirit. That's number one. All of it. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. There's something about somebody who's really called of God. Boy, they walking in love. Okay, it's on. Okay. Anyway, verse four. Nevertheless, I have something against you. Something against you. Somebody say it again. It's time to do something. I have something against you. Why? You left your first love. Remember from whence you are fallen. This is your, this is your direction and mine. Repent. Remember and repent. Do the first works. Or else I will come quickly and remove your candlestick. Notice Jesus said remember. Repent. And then he said I'm going to remove. So we have to repent. We have to remember for once we're fallen, go back and do those first works. If we don't, Jesus promised, I'm going to remove some stuff. See, that's why we lose things. See, we're out there in places we ain't got no business being, or we're not doing what we're called to do. When you first get born again, there's a lot of stuff Jesus allows you to get away with. Did you notice that? Because you don't know much. He's, got, he's, he's helping you grow in grace and knowledge. Say so you walk in a lot of what you know, his blood is cleansing you from stuff you don't even know about yet because you're too young. But when you've been in the faith 10, 15, 20, 30 years, baby, you got to do something. OK, if you're going to get up there and brag, I've been doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. I'm bishop so and so. All right. What's up with that first love? When's the last time we told our church, y'all get out there and get some people saved. See, because it's the sheep that beget sheep. But they ain't doing nothing if you don't tell them. You ain't showing them. You got you to gotta get out there. And I, I'm telling it because Jesus said it. We got to change some stuff. It's time to do something. We got to get it together, church. We have to get it together. Um, man, I've been noticing it. When God, when COVID-19 first hit, I went in my prayer closet in my study because my job shut down and everything. And I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, what's going on? Listen to what he said. This is the year of exposure. I got that directly from the Lord. Came up in my spirit. When I said I heard, he said to me, I'm talking about in my spirit. I'm led by the spirit of God because I'm a son of God. He said, it's the year of exposure. And I sat back and watched it being exposed to. Um, individually, we were supposed to be examining ourselves. Where am I? And you can examine yourself a lot of ways. Spiritually, you can examine yourself financially. Where am I in money? I learned some things during this COVID-19. So thank God I had some money saved and I was able to move, you know, thank God. And we all have to do that. Uh, examine ourselves spiritually. Well, well, was I praying enough? Was I studying enough? Let me sharpen up. Then I had to clean up some stuff in my drawers and stuff that just got just backed up because I wasn't moving. See, do something, do something. And then I watched churches being exposed. Especially some of the bigger ones, they were being exposed, y'all. Um, and remember, judgment begins at the house of God. God had to deal with some stuff. He's not, we're expecting God to judge the world, and we tell God, we, you know, we go against politicians, and God's like, no, 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 no. Judgment begins at the house of God. I'm going to start with my house before I talk to anybody else. And God started cleaning some stuff up. And, and ministers were getting exposed in these crazy sexual relationships and gay relationships and all that stuff. Jesus was dealing with he, and he's still it. Well, there's more to come. Because there's some of them they didn't repent. There's some of them, and Jesus is gonna deal with them. That's not my job to judge them. It's not your job. It's my job to remember from whence I have fallen. It's my job to repent and do the first work Jesus called me to do. I gotta focus on me. I gotta do my part. That's why there's certain church I left. I said, I'm done with that. No more churches you. I'm not going back to that. No. We're going to do right. We're going to live holy. We're going to pray now. We're going to be doing what we're supposed to do. We're going to be working for the kingdom. We're going to work. 
I'm not a little baby no more, and a lot of us are not. It's time to grow up and do something. How does this apply to my life? Then I watch politicians being exposed. You still see still some of it coming out, and there's more to come. There's going to be a great shaking, y'all. COVID-19 has exposed a lot. And we've prayed and we fasted. You know, we've been asking God, if my people are to call by my name, you know, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. And we've done that. And notice I said, second wave still came. So what's happening? Well, God's given us time to repent. People think that, and that's, I didn't say God brought that COVID-19. God is giving us time to get it together because it could be worse, y'all. They thought 2 million would be dead already. In the United States, they, they were, was it 2 million or 200 million? Some crazy number. Yeah, they thought to be, because they were supposed to be really bad. God has been, God has been answering in prayer. He's been merciful, giving people time to repent. It's like the days of Noah, preaching righteousness. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready and bear us in mind. Y'all know the song. It's going to be fire next time. And God's trying to let us know y'all better get it together. See, because there's certain things that man can't control. All those plagues that come, the president called it invisible disease. He was right. It is invisible. It's a demon, it's demonic. And you can't fight that with natural weapons. See? And then earthquakes in diverse places and, and uh, hurricanes and all of a sudden, man can't stop that. It comes to him just devastating. Like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Dealing with something. God's giving us time to get it together. See? So we got to find out what group we're in and then make some changes. If I'm one of the multitudes that's fainting, all oh, right, it's time for me to make the Lord my shepherd. If I'm already saved, I need an under shepherd. Let me get my tail in church like I'm supposed to and get my butt in the Bible, get myself together. It's time out for all that shouting hallelujah just because you're talking. To I talk in tongues, but that still don't mean I don't have to live right and study the word. You can go to hell talking in tongues, y'all. You can go to hell tithing. Yeah, we got to get it together. Judgment begins at the house of God. If you're one of the um, second group, keep doing what you're doing. Keep, late, keep being a disciple, y'all. Stay in the word. Keep working on yourself. Get out there and help somebody. Do something. Say something nice just to smile sometime. Help somebody. Stop putting crazy stuff on Facebook. Tell me, are you a Christian? I know. I see it. And then we put out some of the craziest stuff. Bring out stuff that's encouraging. You can do stuff about your workout, your food. No, there's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Your family, beautiful. But other encouraging stuff, every now and then there ought to be something, a scripture, something like that, because you never know who you're helping. You got to get out there and work. And if you're in that last group, just like Jesus said, repent. Remember from whence you are falling. Get yourself together. Guys, my time is just about gone. I'm looking at the clock here. I appreciate you guys listening today. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, let's do that now. Just say, Lord, yep, that's me. I need to get myself together. I need to do something. I point the finger at myself and I just say, Lord, I repent. I believe the gospel. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe he was buried and you raised him from the dead. Today, I just accept Jesus as my Lord. If you're in a bachelor state, you know what to do. Lord, I repent. Hey guys, Kingdom Seekers Television Network. I'll be back again next week. Jesus is the King.